What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, they confirmed what we already believe should have happened, Brian. They perhaps made all the arguments they could in terms of how they can make this happen and understanding that they needed positive news. They needed an opportunity to get this guy now. And I heard that the Stefan read really well for the part, but ultimately I believe the decision to get Aaron Pierre was due in part to also opportunity that he's hot right now and that he's just, a, they see the star potential in this guy. Not that Stefan doesn't have it because he's been in Jesse Owens. He's, he's done a couple of other things as well. But it came down to him reading with, with uh, Chandler as well because they both read. And they made the, 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 the obvious decision, Brian. So now that we have this, I guess the two big pieces, right? We'll probably start getting more announcements of other uh, characters. And when I say characters, I mean just regular people that are going to be a part of this uh, series uh, to see how this starts to build out. Uh, and when does this start uh, filming? They yeah, I haven't mean, given a date, but I would assume it's film. It's definitely going to be filming in 2025, and as for a release in 2026, that would be my expectation. So, Brian, the 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 expectations are ridiculously high, Brian, because of all that's involved. Where now, Brian? Does Green Lantern obviously has the potential to be? A series unlike we've seen before with the comic book genre, Brian. We can certainly speculate on uh, the the quality of story that will be told based on the individuals involved with this project, right, Brian? So it's the bar is up there, and we haven't even seen a frame yet. Your thoughts on on the latest on on this project? Yeah, look. I uh, let's get into it because we had not just you know we have the Aaron Pierre news, but we've had some other news even recently around this show. And every data point to me so far is just raising my expectation and raising my perceived ceiling for this show. To where I think it's valid to have a discussion in light of how well the Penguin has been received and how well it seems to have been executed, as to whether lanterns can reach that Game of Thrones phenomenon level, we, which we haven't, to your point, in comic book genre, superhero genre, we have not had a show really do that. We've had a film, obviously, the MCU on its run to Endgame. There was a stretch in there where I think we, we got there. But on a television side, you know, even as good as something as Loki was, it still was pretty contained. Like I think there's plenty of corners of the world where we didn't talk about. People didn't talk about Loki and weren't aware of it as good as it was but something like game of thrones like even if you didn't watch it religiously like everyone got caught up in it everyone like it became a global phenomenon based on these books and based on um sort of the the viewer response over the first six seasons and, and i i realize that sounds like hyperbole but everything about this show indicates they're going for it and i think they have the building blocks to you know, make an attempt. So let's rewind first. Aaron Pierre News confirmed to play Jon Stewart. Um, shouts to us, by the way. Who did this as a wrestler? Like, it was, was it Bob Backen? He used to do this to himself? <laughs> or was it, somebody used to do that to themselves. Well, this, I also think it's, it's sports parlance. This is something that Jim Rome used to do on his radio show where he'd be like, he take a segment where he's like, I need to give myself more credit. I haven't given myself <laughs> enough credit lately. So we have not given ourselves enough credit on this because the second we saw Rebel Ridge, we did a show, we cranked it out. We told you that Aaron Pierre should be Jon Stewart. So that's number one. So you can find that show. It's actually gotten some nice viewership in the past week. Number two, though, we gave you Stefan James. He was on my list of three. Yeah, yeah. So we gave you both the guys that actually wound up reading for the part in the end. So we had yeah. your John Stewart all along. I think the key, though, 
is that they both read opposite Kyle Chandler. And I think when you're doing a show like this, you can have two incredibly talented actors individually who there's just a little something different when they're opposite the co-lead that has to be the backbone of this show. And so I would suspect the, the article suggested that both James and Pierre had their fans inside of WB. It, it suggested it was not a sort of like unilateral, unanimous, immediate decision, which kind of tells me you're splitting hairs a little bit, but I think the tiebreaker has to be, how are they opposite Chandler? And I would suspect that Pierre just might have been a little bit more as I said, I, I still think in that Rebel Ridge, he has such chemistry, even though it's contentious chemistry with Don Johnson, that I feel like that will that would have served him well in, in this show. And, and so I feel like maybe some of that might have might have broken the tie. Um, interesting. I don't know if it matters, but uh, neither one of these guys is American. Um, I don't think it matters, but like obviously John Stewart's a U.S. serviceman in, in in the comics, and so you had Pierre who's British and James who was Canadian. Um, yeah, obviously I don't think anyone looked at Henry Cavill and was like he can't be Superman because he's he's British. But um, I just thought it was something something of note. But so we got that cast. Um, I think it sets up perfectly, as we've talked about previously, in terms of what they want, what James Gunn wants to do with the universe. We said Aaron Pierre is thirty years old six foot three his star is on the rise but he's not you know he he isn't denzel now no 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 right so there is runway where this role can help get him toward what we think will be bigger things incidentally you you also brought up another one his voice is going to be pretty famous in a couple of months if it isn't already because he's yeah. playing who mufasa <laughs> yeah he's playing mufasa and lion king so you know you know what i said to my wife because she and i were talking about it um because she, every once in a while, takes a chance to listen to our show. Uh, and I said to her, he's, if, if, like, if you believe in re reincarnation, he's like the second coming of uh, James L. Jones right now, to me. He certainly has some of that inflection in his voice. Yes. I mean, they yes. could not have probably found a better young Mufasa, which is, a, you know, obviously, James Earl Jones was the, the original uh, in, in The Lion King. And recently, I'm surprised just, if they ever do a movie about him uh, and he plays him. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. Who just he just passed away, by the way. So yeah. uh, past year. So uh, it's exactly what they wanted. Young John in the lead, sort of older mentor Hal. Um, I guess I'll throw it back to you. Like now that we have the two, we know it's the two. Like, what do you want from these two guys? Like, forget the rest of the show. What do you want from just your lanterns on screen? As far as chemistry, chemistry, um, you know, what the characters are asked to do in this show, I think is also a key question. Like what, what do you, you know, what archetypes or what style of, you know, filmmaking or land do you want to see on screen? I mean, if we're looking at material to reference, I would think if he's playing Jon Stewart, the one to reference would be the one from, you know, if I'm, if I, if I didn't read the comics, the Justice League Unlimited one, right? I would expect something similar to Rebel Ridge. I don't think we're ever going to get a Rebel Ridge 2 or anything like that. I don't think so, because this guy, is, he's out of here. So we'll probably get somebody else as a series, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know what happens. Um, so I expect that sort of character that he played similar to Re Rebel Ridge. Okay. An instructor, a commander, uh, you know, an expert in whatever it is that he's doing, and he has that a uh, sergeant mentality, men military mentality in terms of his approach and how he speaks to people. Right? Okay. Chandler, I would suspect we get something similar to how he's played other roles before too. A bit arrogant, um, a bit funny, you know, wise cracking sort of dude, you know, but still chill in under whatever situation how jordan is sort of his commander sort of you know i don't know seniority whatever right and he has to sort of uh that dynamic will have to will be interesting because 
He's a military guy. He's a sergeant. Whatever. He's a, what is his 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 title in 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 military? Is he the, a sergeant? I thought he was a sergeant. I'll look it up while you're. Okay, so if he's a, he's that role. He has that role, but he has to now listen to Hal Jordan as his uh, commander, so to speak. Right? He has to because he's the one. He's he's perhaps learning the ropes. Maybe I don't know how long he's been a Green Lantern, but still. I expect to see a little bit of 48 hours. Nick Nolte. Yeah, we use Eddie that analogy. Yeah. So that to me, this, you know, regardless of what they'll look like in the suits, I, I don't suppose we'll see that anytime soon in the series. But how they play off each other will be certainly uh, the make or break for me. So here's a question. Do you think they both have the ring and are both part of the Green Lantern Corps already at the start of the show? Or do you think, Hal presumably has to be if he's older. Do you think this is in part an origin of Jon Stewart as Lantern, given he's the young, the young lead? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that if that were to, to be the case. Because essentially you're 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 building this would be perfect the opp the f perfect opportunity to to start that and have him in these other films that you plan on doing because that would offer they could because it is again it's a TV show so you have room and you have time to do this uh, you can start with Stewart as a Marine if you want I mean he was in the Marine Corps I just checked he was a sergeant uh, that, okay. that that was correct. So you could start with him as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. You could have some of the opening scenes. He's still part of that. And somehow he kind of gets intertwined with this, or this sort of interplanetary mystery that we're going on. And that brings him into contact with Hal. But you could start there. Um, you, you made the point about Pierre's performance in Rebel Ridge. He is a little more fully formed. So in the sense of he, he, he has a superior officer or he kind of has a mentality of like he does have a superior court officer who he leans on in the course of that movie. But I yeah. think he's a little more fully formed than he will be in Lanterns. I expect in Lanterns he'd be a little more impetuous, a little more um, apt to do his do his own thing versus what Hal tells him to do, which kind of yeah. creates the tension. Yeah. Um, so whereas in Rebel Ridge, like his combat skills were refined, his his sort of his tactics were were sophisticated. I don't think he's necessarily going to have all of that in the context of yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. show. Um, I had posited we had started to have this discussion previously i don't i was at first i was kind of so disappointed this was earthbound um but as this has gone on and we've seen the casting i'm so interested in the casting now i'm kind of like how much do i actually want to see the rings at work like how much do i want to see the suits uh early in this show and i'm not sure i gotta be honest i'm not sure like they have to come out at some point like i don't think you can go a whole season without yeah. i wouldn't pull a daredevil netflix season one where like he doesn't get the costume until the very end just because this is like a power it's not like a human made yeah. um suit but i don't know that i need a hal and john you know dressed to the nines in their suits using their rings to create all these crazy objects in a huge set piece with some alien villain in, in episode one either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had the, the, the a similar thought that, you know, we don't necessarily need to see them in their suits anytime soon in the series, perhaps later on if need be, but I think, and that's why the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk show worked so well because he only showed up for those few moments, right? Sure. Um, and in this, it can't be about that. It'll be, we'll see some cool stuff in terms of how they use it if they already have it. And if they don't have it, why they don't have it is interesting perhaps only how has it right it, yeah like maybe being... only only how can fly maybe john can't like you don't like you know they could have stuff yeah yeah it's a, there's a lot of interesting ways they they'll they can go about this and make it uh interesting and not goofy yeah and i think again it's like you presume that how has been off world a lot yeah john has not right so there's all sorts of that like you know how it's funny, they've used the true detective analogy throughout 
in part because I think it's an, that was an HBO show. Yeah. But I feel like as we're getting closer to this, I also think there's an X Files parallel here, in the sense of if you think back to that show way back in the day, it was like David Duchovny's character was the believer, right? And mm -hmm. Scully's character is the non-believer. And I yeah. think that applies here. It's like Hal's the believer. He's part of the core. He's been wherever intergalactically. It's, yeah. it's a good soldier. He he lives in the present and the reality. And he's like, I don't know, Mars, whatever, like whatever planet, whatever sector. What are you talking about? You know. <laughs> so there's that. There's that interplay. It also led me to, and I'll ask you this question. I do not believe there's going to be a single um, lead villain to this series. I'm putting that out there. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there will be one. I, to me, the X-Files was like a mystery of the week. It didn't have that sort of interconnectedness. But the mystery was the villain. The mystery was the objective. And I think that's the case here. I'm not looking for a comics grand villain, um, yeah. certainly not like Parallax or anything like that, to be part of this show. I think it's much more about exploration. And any sort of bigger villain is going to be more of a tease for what James Gunn wants to do with it down the road. What do you think about that? That we won't get a casting of like a big name actor as a foil for these two guys? I don't necessarily think we'll have that. What you're describing, I think we'll have those individuals who are certainly keeping secrets and have to sort of protect those secrets. And then, you know, we look at them as possibly antagonists, so to speak. But yeah, I don't see, I think this is leading towards a rendition of Hyperplan. Okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but that's to my X Files analogy, where like every week it would be like they had their freak of the week or they had some a criminal they were chasing, right? But that it wasn't like a, it, it yes. wasn't it wasn't a Lex Luthor. It wasn't yeah, you know, yeah, a yeah, 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 they yeah. were constantly up against, you know. Yeah, so I yeah. Feel like it, yeah, exactly. I feel like these are threads that might lead to a future Justice League villain, or maybe it leads to like the anti life equation down the road, like something like that. But yeah, yeah I don't think the show needs it. I, I yeah. think it's really about these two guys, like on these on these of course. on these on this mission, this detective mission. We did get some other news, all of it good. So they've got James Hawes, who was the director of a number of the episodes of Slow Horses, which I would argue is one of the best shows on television. He is doing the, the pilot and he's doing the first two episodes of season one. Um, I think for the Penguin, that's worked really well. They got Craig Zubel, who had done a lot of um, really high profile stuff in TV. And that show has looked great out of the gate. So same approach here. Um, also a late casting news. We didn't talk about this one. Her supporting role, first supporting role that apparently is being announced. Not that you would know her, but Kelly McDonald is apparently going to be playing like a police officer, sheriff, some kind of um, supporting role that's a regular in this series. Uh, she is also an Emmy Award winner. Uh, she's a British, uh, Scottish actress, but um, won an Emmy Award, has been nominated for a BAFTA. So it was in Train Spotting. If you're a fan of Train Spotting, the movie did do a little work in Harry Potter. Um, was in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, Board, Boardwalk HBO. Empire. That's where I know her from. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Another actress with some hardware I, on her mantelpiece that's a joining the show. Actress, yes. So, and this is not a. Com I don't believe that she's playing a comics character. She's playing like a and a human character and around these people. But it goes to sparing no expense to make this mm -hmm. thing, you know, as high end as possible. A lot of good things brian coming out of uh green lantern we can only hope um and i think we'll get an interesting series brian that will sort of set the bar for how you do comic book series i think going forward and, and I brian say. i said this in the past years before When Disney Plus had the opportunity to build from series to theater, mm -hmm. where you could consistently get billions of dollars every time you put out a movie because you've built that series that's dope. Like, imagine, man, Penguin and what Penguin will do for the Batman 2. Are you kidding me? Yeah. There's, that's, there, there's your example that I spoke about years ago. So I think Green Lantern will definitely be the template as Penguin has already set the example 
of what needs to be done to these shows so that we're interested in further uh, exploration of, of, the, of, the, of these IP and how they do this. But this goes to my lead, right? What I said, if you look at the Penguin doing the numbers that it's doing on HBO, which they were smart enough to convert it from max to Sunday night primetime, that show is already in the top three or four of anything they've put out over the last, you know, five to six years. Okay. It's up there with all the, the Emmy award winning shows. And I'm sure Farrell will get nominated, if nothing else, for, for this. But I would submit, you know, Green Lantern, and let alone probably the two most famous Green Lanterns, are higher profile leads. These are the, in my opinion, these are the highest profile lead characters we've had in a comic book television show, unless you're going back to the good old days, the Adam West Batman until yeah. the, the uh, Bill Bixby Incredible Hulk, when they did use the frontline characters in you know, TV shows. Unless you're going back to our Linda Carter as Wonder Woman, unless you're going yeah, back yeah. to those days, we haven't had, like the, the TV shows we've gotten have all been the peripheral characters, right? The supporting characters, the people who are lower in notoriety. And that even includes Farrell's Penguin. Like he got this show because he stole it, honestly, in the Batman and he earned yeah. it. But to me, this is frontline. They're putting frontline heroes in a TV show. And to your point, looking to build towards something bigger. We have begged Marvel to do this with, I mean, for example, like the Wolverine anthology series. We've begged them to do this. And we're yeah. still hoping they do do it as we get into the mutant verse. But they've been far more reluctant to use their mainline name characters in lead roles in TV shows. And I'm fascinated to say, like, if Penguin's a top three or four show of the last five or six years, why can't this, if it is really good and matches the talent of everyone involved, why can't this be? Game of Thrones level? Why can't it take off to where people are like, I have to know what these guys are up to every single week that this show is on? And how does that not help the universe? How does that not get you excited someday for if they can get to the Justice League that you get to see Aaron Pierre on the big screen alongside David Corn Sweat and alongside whoever, you know, Alan Richin, <laughs> whoever yeah. needs you, Batman, is going to someday. We have to discuss Adam Richardson at some point because I feel like the the season four announcement, even though we haven't gotten a season three, yeah, um, I think may disqualify him from getting the role of Batman, Brian, because of the physical demands that he would undertake to sort of um, because some people say he's too big, but we'll get we'll get to that. Hey, talk, call Christian Bale. It's doable. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, man, he'll 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 take you to his garden of apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Green Lantern news that we've gotten, confirmations, uh, the new announcements of of other uh, cast members, and because the, the listen, the people involved in this show are are, are certainly uh, high profile and do good stuff. Yeah. So James Gunn is putting together a team, an all-star team, to give us hopefully what what sets off the new strategy on how to do things. I'll leave on a prediction. If this show is as good as we think it is, and it comes out and it does huge numbers, I predict that Paradise Lost, they will alter it and introduce Wonder Woman in the show. 